there, my name's James and welcome to my personal channel. Uh, this is a bit of a vlog journal recap of what's been happening the last couple of weeks as I embark on this project that I've started called Graduate Theory. Now, Graduate Theory is a project and a podcast and a media media thing that is designed for graduates. So people that are in university, maybe they're, they're near the end of university, maybe they're just finishing university and about to go into a job, or maybe they're like myself, they're in, at the start of their career, you know, seeing what's out there, seeing, you know, how we can learn from who is out there, what things are possible, um, everything like that. So I really want to speak to people that are, you know, they found success in the workplace. I want to speak to people that have perhaps gone a different way in the workplace where they've, you know, they've haven't gone the traditional routes and still kind of done their own thing. I think, you know, people that have that are entrepreneurs or people that, you know, have have, have just found success. You know, how did they do that? And and I really want to, to find people and interview people that are relevant to these guys. You know, I just think of myself when I was in my final year or even where I am now. Like, who do I want to speak to? I think there's plenty of people out there that I do want to speak to, and I think those people that I want to speak to are also relevant to. The, the broader community, and I think if I'm going to go and speak to someone and learn about what they what they have to say, then it's only fair that <laughs> yeah that we share it with others. And I think there's so many valuable and interesting people out there that something like this, you know, is something I would have really liked last year or many years ago. Just continuing on that story, you know, I guess my story and my reason for starting this something something like this at least is going back to when I was at university. So I was at university for five years. Uh, my first year, I was studying engineering. Uh, didn't really enjoy that as much as I would have liked. Um, I didn't I didn't enjoy... Uh, we had to do chemistry and design and some of these kinds of things, and that just didn't really gel with me as much as I would have liked. So I changed degrees at the end of my first year to a double degree of mathematics and finance, and that was much more enjoyable, something that... I really enjoyed. I could see where it was going to take me, and I, I, you know, I could see where I was going, and I just thought, you know, this is much, much of a better match, and there was nothing really else at uni that I would have preferred to do. That was, that was what I was going to do, and I, I really enjoyed that. But I think as I went through university, particularly my first three years of university, I didn't have as much guidance as I would have liked. Now I didn't have people, I didn't know how high the bar was to do certain things, I didn't know, I didn't have any friends that had gone and done cool things after university, I didn't really know what was out there, what, like, what I could realistically achieve. There's plenty of podcasts and information about there about, you know, someone that's like a successful CEO, or you can read, like, biographies where like the person when did some fantastic amazing thing and that's that's all I'm good but a lot of these things were just not applicable to my situation and it's much it's much more difficult to try and you know apply these things to your life when you don't have that personal connection and what I found was through uh, the end of my fourth year and absolutely my last year of uni was finally where I was meeting these people and getting involved in these things that I could see, okay, this is what it takes to become a certain thing. This is what it takes to to do these things that, I, that I've known I've kind of wanted to do, but I never knew anyone that had done them. I never knew what it took to, to do these things. And so those, are th those things that I have in my head are things like, what does it take to get a graduate job? You know, what does it take? To, what kind of qualifications do I need to, to work at, you know, Deloitte or one of these consulting companies? What kind of degrees do I need? What kind of, what do my grades need to be? Um, you know, what kind of extracurricular activities do I need to have? What kind of a person are they looking for? And I think, you know, a lot of these situations when I was going through uni, I just had no idea what it meant to be, you know, to be qualified to, or, or, you know, what was the standard that I had to be at? To, to get into these places. I just had absolutely no idea. And fortunately, as I went through my fourth year of uni, I started to take things a little bit more seriously. Uh, and, and particularly my fifth year, I got really involved in extracurricular things at uni, not just not just playing sport, but ones that were, or clubs that were directly related to the kind of things I wanted to do after uni. So things like I joined a consulting club at university. I was I was a treasurer in a different club, and these kinds of things were helping me build my resume so that I could go out and do better, get a, get a job that I wanted after university. 
But I think these things were not clear to me. And these were things I kind of had to work out myself. And there was no real model for, you know, for how to go about doing this. Or there wasn't like, it wasn't clear to me, you know, how to go about doing these things. I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. You know, it wasn't clear to me how to go from this uni student who's in like second or third year, pretty average grades, no real extracurriculars, doesn't have a job on the side. How can I go from here to getting a good job, getting something that, you know, getting a really desirable job, you know, going and working at a top consulting company, you know, top, uh, to a big bank, you know, things like that. What does it actually take? <laughs> you know, what does it take? And I just had absolutely no idea. And a lot of the time, these guys aren't super clear on the, pe- the people they hire, like they, they'll sit down with you and say, oh yeah, like a 5.5, you know, GP, like, you know, you just need to credit average, you know, to get in. Um, it's just like, that's just not genuine. And I think, I think there's a lot of, that I've learned as, as part of going through this process and a lot that can, and particularly there's a lot more that can be shared, right? There's a lot more information that, that is out there that, you know, in hearing that from people's experiences, from people that have gone through these areas. I think there's so much wisdom out there that just doesn't make it to your average uni student. And I think for someone like myself, because really, at the end of the day, the, the podcast that I'm creating is designed for me when I was younger, is like, you know, I really want there to be someone out there that's showing me, okay, this is someone who's gone and done the things that I want to do, like exactly what I want to do, what did they do, and and kind of trace that back to how I can replicate that in my own situation. And what I've found is that a lot of these things exist, even if it's in America or wherever these stories, but they're not applicable to my situation, really. They're, you know, there's good examples and certainly good lessons that can come from these things, but it's not something that, you know, it's it's like hearing a story about someone versus meeting them and, and seeing them in person. There's there's a bigger difference the closer they kind of are to you. In my experience, um, you know, hearing a story about you know on a podcast, you know, or let's say on Joe Rogan or something, hearing he, this person do something, okay, that's great. But you know, th- there's certain levels that as they get closer and closer to you, as you you know, let's say you met them in person, then the lessons are a lot more applicable. You can kind of see, okay, this is what they did. I, they're right here in front of me. I can do that. And I think that there's, uh, there's certainly room for that in this, in this space in Australia with the graduate careers and things like that. Cause I think there's no real, you know, well, at least I, I didn't have that. <laughs> I didn't know even where to find it. So I think that's, that's a sign that there's room for something out there to be that voice to university or people at university to show them, you know, this is what, this is what you need to get to where you want to go. These are people that have walked the walk in these certain areas that you know, are spoken highly of, and this is what you what you you know you need. This is what you need to do, basically. Um, so I think that's kind of my motivation for starting something like this. Is I and even for myself in my current situation, like let's put all the graduate stuff to the side. As a as a someone that's new to the workforce, you know, I want to learn. You know, I think I'm in the same situation almost as I was when I was at uni. You know, I think there's there's no real role models that I've you know, that I can see that are that are like, you know, okay, I'm here. How can I get to the next step? There's no there's no real uh, content out there for for some someone like that. And I think it's a similar situation to what I was at uni, where I really wanted something like this. Like, well, at least now I can see that something like this would have been useful for me. And what I'm trying to do now is create that for myself. Uh, you know, create that for myself three years ago, (laughs) you know, create that for my uni student self, but also create that ongoing thing for me now as well. And, and and I say me, but I know there are many other graduates, many other people new to the workforce, whatever company you're at, there's many uni students, wherever you are in Australia, wherever you are in the world, where these lessons can be directly applied. And I think that that is just so important. And that is kind of my, my reason for starting something like this. I think it's I personally can see the need. <laughs> like I can see that I would have found this really useful. So I'm absolutely certain that there are other people out there that feel the same way. So 
with that as kind of intro out of the way, because I will try and do these ongoing, but that's kind of a bit of a manifesto there for you. I'm going to do a bit of a more formal one, which if you're interested, you can go and watch later, because <laughs> I haven't recorded it yet, on the Graduate Theory YouTube channel, which is where all the content is going to go. So today, I just want to do a bit of a journal and just give you a personal update with how things are going. So definitely starting something like this, I was feeling quite nervous. To be honest, I've thought had this idea in my head for over a year now. It's probably almost 18 months at this stage. And I have just not had the guts to do it and not had the guts to kind of pull the trigger and, and you know, put my foot down and say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is something that I think the world needs and something that I can do. I think a lot of that nervousness comes from, you know, what are people going to think of me? Is it going to be good enough? Things like this. And... I think that is warranted to some extent. Like, you know, what are people going to think of you? Maybe they won't like you. But at the same time, I there have been things like things where I've put myself out there in the past, and I've not had a single person ever be like an actual hater. (laughs) You know, Uh, no one's ever said to me like, "Please, like, you know, stop this. You suck." Uh, (laughs) You know, so these kind of this idea that people are going to like, you know not like me or look down upon me for doing something like this is mostly self-constructed, I think. I think I've heard this said before, but I think, yeah, people tend to have this idea and myself included that the world is kind of revolving around us a little bit and that whenever we do something, everyone's just watching us to see what we do and where we fail. But in reality, everyone is thinking that. So in reality, everyone thinks everyone's watching them Right? So, which actually means no one, no one is watching anyone, <laughs> in, in a way. Like if, if I think every, everyone's watching me, but this person over here also thinks everyone's watching them, so they're just looking out for themselves. Um, it's kind of called. I think I've heard it described as the spotlight effect. So you're kind of overstating your importance to other people, when in reality everyone's kind of just worried about themselves. And I think that's something that, you know, I've learned as time's gone on, and I feel like I'm at the point now where, you know, I'm kind of you know, who cares what people think? I, th- I, I'm behind this, so this is something that I'm going to try and I'm going to do. So I think, I think, and, and another big part of that too, just on that note, is, is this idea that I'm going to die someday is quite valuable in these scenarios, and it's something that has I've almost come back to as as a push to to kind of get stuff out there, right? Is that like, okay, I've had this fantastic idea. I really want to do this. I see where I'm going to take it. I have all the skills and contacts or whatever available. You know, I could just not do it. But then let's say I'm 30, 40, 50 years old. You know, am I going to look back at this moment and wish that I'd done something? Yeah, probably, (laughs) probably. And so I'm going to die someday. Would I rather stay in my box and do you know, be quiet and not do anything, or am I going to say, listen, I'm going to die someday, I'm going to take these opportunities, I'm going to go out and I'm going to create things. I think that is a much better approach. And, you know, your time is limited. (laughs) Your time is limited, right? Steve Jobs, your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life, okay? So get out there. And I think that's been a massive, uh, you know, coming back to just thinking of dying has been something, as morbid as that sounds, (laughs) is, is something that, you know, that is, I've come back to a lot to to get started and get that extra push that sometimes needed to get things started because I'm I know that once things get kind of get rolling and, and you get that positive feedback then it's much easier to continue you know once you know people are liking it and you're you're providing that resource for people then it's it's easy to continue on because you know that you're doing something good for the world so I've discussed the reasons for the name and the niche I think I covered that fairly extensively. I've just got some notes here. Reasons for video. Yeah, so I am going to do... It's going to be a video podcast. And the reason why I decided that is because video means I can push to a lot of other social media channels and not just audio. So if you do only a an audio podcast, you can... I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. There's probably billions of... Like, not billions. There's probably heaps of like audio social medias, but... You know, my understanding is it's really only the audio sort of podcast. Maybe, I don't know if you can put them on Clubhouse or something. But really, audio only is fairly limited at the moment. Whereas video, videos, so video 
and audio. So now we can publish to anywhere where there's audio because we're recording this podcast and then the videos as well. So that opens up YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, TikTok. Like, you know, video and audio opens almost... Well, I I don't know. There's probably not a social media that exists that doesn't take video. So... That is, is really important to me, like getting the message out there and, and opening up these channels for people to find out about what I'm doing is is important. So doing the videos that way is, is something that's super key, I think, and something that, yeah, I think is important and it's going to allow, it's going to mean that the podcast can grow faster if, you know, if, if there's more ways to come into contact with the content. Um, so that, that's my reasons for video. So with that being said, the equipment that I purchased, so li- this is like the first time I've done a podcast or anything. So what I did was I went and <laughs> I just went and bought this microphone here, which is a Blue Yeti. So it's, it's probably not the best <laughs> for like podcasting or whatever. Like there's almost certainly better ones, but I've just seen this one. I knew that it would be easy to set up. Um, you know, I knew it's just going to sit in its stand and do its thing. Um, and it's going to be pretty good. Um, <laughs> so, like, it just kind of, I didn't really look for that long. I just knew that this one would be at least pretty good. So, we've gone and bought that one. Um, and maybe we'll, we can always upgrade along the line. And then the video thing that I've purchased, I've just got a 1080p webcam um, just above, like, my screen here. <laughs> and that's going to be the, the source for videos. And then the thing we're using to do the actual video podcast is called Riverside. So there's, I think there's a few options. There's Riverside and Squadcasts, I think, does video podcasting as well. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the kind of setup. It seems to work fairly well. I mean, you're watching kind of the first video that I've done <laughs> with this setup here now. So yeah, I, I think it's working quite well. Um, plans for the future so yeah plans for the future so I think the idea is going to kind of be let's do two podcasts every week which we'll see (laughs) how how much work that entails obviously got to edit and stuff like that so who knows because I'm doing all this on top of my actual job so we've got like you know the full-time nine to five and then this is going to kind of be out of hours project so there is going to be a lot of time spent doing this. Um, you know, a lot of, fi- you know, you got to find a guest, record, like, we'll plan the episode, record, edit, um, you know, and especially with these videos, kind of cut the thing up, push all that onto social media with, like, you know, captions and tags and whatever other stuff. So there is quite a bit of an effort that's going to go on here. But um, hopefully, <laughs> you know, I guess the idea is, like, let's just let's just have fun. Um I'm not going to put in put on too many expectations, you know, I'm not saying like I expect to make money by this certain time. Um I think this activity in of itself is quite enjoyable. <laughs> like this when I when I'm go and do work on this on this stuff at least at the moment, I'm you know, I'm energized. I'm excited to work on it. I don't need to set a timer or anything to concentrate on what I'm doing. You know, I know what needs to be done and I'm excited to do it. And I think that is that's what it's all about almost is doing things that you enjoy and yeah I'm going to keep recording these journals so I can keep coming back to it and so even other people that want to follow along with the story can also follow along um, because it's you know there's so much content out there so uh, you know I I may as well add in my my lessons and, and the things that I've learned in the hope that you know someone else can apply that to their own life so yeah, I think I think that's going to be right. So the plans for the future, I mean, yeah. I think we'll just find people that are interesting, connect with them, record a podcast with them, and then let the world enjoy, I think. is uh, If not the world enjoy, I get to enjoy it because I'm the one that gets to interview. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's important, right, is I will enjoy this no matter, no matter how many views or how much money it makes this activity in of itself is is quite enjoyable. Um, I think that's a good place to start from. Um, so yeah, I just hope it continues to be fun. And, you know, no doubt... I mean, I can see this feeling a need for myself. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm certain that other people out there, you know, might 
have the same problem. But yeah, I think we may as well wrap it up here. I know we've been speaking a little bit now. Um, these I'm just going to leave pretty much unedited uh, because it's just a journal. Um, it's not super important. So if you've watched this far, thank you uh, so much. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a bunch of these journals. Um, hopefully, maybe you're watching this in the future. <laughs> and, you know, graduate theory has just got heaps of views or whatever. You know, that'd be the dream. But, you know, we can only hope. <laughs> you know, we work hard and see what happens. Um, but, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please, my website is jfricker.com. If you want to go there and look up any of my blog posts or other stuff, you're already on my YouTube channel, so you can see all of that. Graduate theory uh, www.graduatetheory.com will have all of that stuff then there's also the YouTube channel which uh, and stuff like that which you may have already seen but yep, thank you for listening thank you for watching and we'll see you next time, peace